Hi, this is Ushua. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 9th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see first topic. So this topic I collected from PIB. So this topic which is mainly talking about one important concept that is about Mangar Hillock in Rajasthan. So title of this article which is mainly says that NMA chairman Shri Tarun Vijay submits report to Shri Arjun Ram Meghwal on declaring Man Gar Hilok in Rajasthan as a monument of national importance as a tribute to 1500-1500 built tribal freedom fighters. So actually here we need to know about what is the importance of this Man Gar Hilok. And why we need to declare this monument as a national importance, monument of national importance. So these are the two important criteria that we need to look about. And if you are talking about prelims point of view, you can expect a question like, so Manga Hillock, which is located in which state? And you will get options like Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, like that. So correct option here is, so this Manga Hillock is located in Rajasthan. So this topic is very important from your prelims and even from your mains. So now let us try to understand the whole topic in detail. So if you see context, it mainly says that recently report by NMA, that is nothing but National Monuments Authority, which mainly called for this Mangar, this Mangar hilltop in Rajasthan. And this Mangar hilltop in Rajasthan, it is to be designated as national monument in honor of 1500 built tribal freedom fighters. And even you need to know about this built tribe people and where they are located and in which state we can see this built people. So this will be also important from here prelims point of view and even if you are from anthropology background you need to know about the contributions of this tribal people right so from that point of view here this tribal people that is built tribes is important from your basic facts so here recently report by this national monuments authority which mainly called for mangar hilltop in rajasthan to be designated as national monument in honor of 1500 built tribal freedom fighters so if you are talking about details, it mainly says that, so what is this national ancient monument or why we need to give the status for this Mangar Hillock as monument of national importance. So if you are talking about one important act that is ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains act of 1956 here. So the definition of this national ancient monuments that mainly comes under this act. That is Ancient Monument and Archaeological Sites and Remains Act of 1958. And what is this act which mainly defines? You have to know that. So which all will come under this National Ancient Man Monuments. So here which mainly includes either any structure or any monument and even any cave, rock, sculpture, inscriptions. Okay, so which is having historical and ancient interest. So either it may be a structure, monument, cave, rock, sculpture and inscriptions. So they will be giving the status of this nation ancient monuments. And they need to have especially structural, uh, if you are talking about especially these either caves, rocks, sculptures, inscriptions, they need to have especially historical and archaeological interest. And the central government is authorized to maintain and protect and promote these monuments. So once these caves or sculptures or inscriptions, monuments, they are declared as this national ancient monuments, then it is now the responsibility of the central government. Central government need to focus on maintenance, protection and promotion of these monuments. So this is about some important facts. So if you are talking about man hillock so what is the historical background so on which basis on which historical basis so here this authority which is mainly decided to give the status of this national monument status so if you are talking about background here so this hillock which is mainly located across this Gujarat Rajasthan border 
and this is a site which is very very important because it is a site of a tribal uprising where massacre of 1500 built tribal freedom fighters took place and that too in year 1913. So in 1913 about 1500 built tribal freedom fighters they massacre which mainly happened and this place also known as Adivasi Jallianwala okay Adivasi Jallianwala and there has been a demand to build a memorial and later on on November 17th 1913 British forces they opened fire on the tribals who gathered at the site and who were mainly holding a meeting in the protest led by the leader from the community that is Govind Guru okay so here at that time in 1930 on November 17th, so they mainly opened fire on the tribals and they gathered at a site. Okay, they got, gathered at a site where they were mainly holding a meeting and the leader here was Govind Guru. Okay, so this is about some history regarding this Mangar Hillock. And if you are talking about where is the location of this Mangar Hillock, here we can see this Mangar Hillock. Okay. And if you are talking about the tribes, it is built tribes. So these people, they are commonly referred to the Rajasthan's bowman. Okay, bills are commonly referred to this Rajasthan's bowman. And they were India's most widely dispersed tribal communist. And actually, they are also considered as South Asia's largest tribe. So this is also one important prelims fact that you need to know. And they are mainly classified into two types. So first one here is central or pure bills, second one is eastern or Rajput bills. And the central bills they can be found in the mountain ranges, especially in states of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Rajasthan and, uh, and even in some areas of Tripura. Okay, Tripura is northwestern region. We can see these central bills people they mainly present. And actually these people they are considered as scheduled tribes in different states like Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Tripura. So these are some important facts regarding this topic and I hope you understand and try to remember where these build tribes are located in India and I want to give you one homework. So please draw Indian map and locate in which state these build tribes are located. So that will be very helpful for your presentation of your answer in your mains. Okay, try to practice that. So if you are going to do that map pointing work, so let me know, yes, I'm going to do in the comment box. And now let us try to see next topic, it is regarding derecho. So here, what is derecho, a straw that turned sky green in the US. So if you see in this image, yes, exactly, you can type derecho in YouTube, then you can see the storm which mainly led to the heavy rain. And because of that heavy rain and the fast moving winds, with a very very high speed that even uprooted the trees and after some time what happened the sky which became very very green in color in USA so now let us try to understand this topic so this topic will be important from your GS paper 1 under geography so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that recently in few states of US so they are mainly hit by a storm system and that storm system is called as derecho and because of this derecho that led to turning of sky green for the temporary period for not permanent period. So they mostly occur across the central and as well as eastern parts of US. So in which area is that is central and as well as eastern part of US and actually here super derecho which mainly occurred in year 2009. Okay, in 2009, there was severe uh, derecho. At that time here, the winds mainly blown with a speed of 170 kilometers per hour. And in 2010, also Russia, which mainly witnessed the first documented derecho, and they have also swept through Germany, Finland, etc. And recently, we saw this derecho in uh, Bulgaria, as well as Poland. So now, let us try to see some details. So what is this derecho? Derecho means nothing but it is like a wind storm with heavy rain and that will also lead to the changing of color of sky. So this is a simple concept that you have to remember. And if you see derecho, it is a widespread, long-lived, straight-line wind storm and even associated with the band or rapidly moving showers. It also, it also associated with 
rapidly moving showers or thunderstorms okay there also it is a widespread long lived straight line wind storm and it is also associated with the band or rapidly moving showers and as well as thunderstorms so the name of this derecho which mainly comes from the word that is a spanish word that is la derecha it means straight straight line storms they are those in which thunderstorms winds have no rotation like than tornado so what is a tornado i hope you have studied about this tornado in ncert 11th class book tornado means nothing but here the cloud which appears like so it is mainly touching the sky and as well as ground and it will be moving like a very very fast okay it is a circular movement which that is mainly seen and it is also very very dangerous that mainly happens in the temperate regions so in the same way like tornado we can see this is straight storm so here we can see the large cloud which is mainly forming but it is not rotating like this tornado so this is called as derecho and here these storms which mainly travels hundreds of miles over a very vast area and actually this derecho which is mainly seen in a weather phenomena especially in the warm weather phenomena it mainly occurs in the month of june and as well as july okay but if you are talking about occurrence of this derecho it is rare when we are comparing with the tornado and as well as hurricanes so if you are talking about types of this derecho so we will be having three types progressive serial and as well as hybrid so in this progressive derecho it mainly associated with short line of thunderstorm they are very very short and they may travel for hundreds of miles along a relatively narrow path they will be following a narrow path and actually this progressive type of derecho which is a mainly a sum of phenomena but if you are talking about serial phenomena so here we can see the movement of this which mainly happens in a wide and as well as long and it as well it it has uh, it uh, it is normally occurs during the spring and as well as uh, spring season we can see that but in summer season we can see this progressive and winter season we can see this serial and next one is hybrid hybrid is a combination of both okay both progressive and as well as serial so this is about this topic and if this topic is a new for you so please let me know in the comment box and type new new for me in comment box and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding india gets elected to unesco panel on intangible cultural heritage for period from 2022 to 2026 cycle so here it is talking about intangible cultural heritage so if you open your nitin singhania book you will come across this tangible and intangible cultural heritage sites and as a new psc aspirant you need to know which are those intangible and tangible culture heritage sites which are present in india along with the years because sometimes you can uh, quite a question like arrange following things in the order so this article i cut from this all india radio so now let us try to understand this topic so this topic will be important from your gs paper 1 under art and culture point of view so now let us try to see this topic in almost all the di dimensions so we are talking about context it mainly says that india has been elected to intergovernmental committee of unesco okay unesco 2003 convention india has been elected okay and it is a period for from 2012 to 2026 okay 2022 to 2026 cycle so actually you will be getting a one doubt like so whether it is the first time india elected not at all so india already served the member served as a member of this committee from 2006 to 2010 and 2014 to 2018 that means already two terms completed and now it is the third term so this question will be important this point will be important because it might be the potential statements in your prelims and now let us try to see the details if you see details it mainly says that intangible culture heritage it is nothing but practices expressions knowledge and skills that communities groups and sometimes individuals they recognize as part of their culture heritage okay so as part of their culture heritage the people mainly believe some practices some expressions knowledge and as well as skills communities groups etc sometimes they will be recognizing so those will comes under this intangible culture heritage so they are also called as living culture heritage for example you can talk about oral traditions 
so especially in gurukulas so that is in ancient times here gurus they used to teach uh, their students especially by chanting that's it so that is oral tradition next one is performing arts social practices and rituals and festival events knowledge and practices concerning nature and as well as universe and even traditional craftsmanship so these are some important examples of this intangible cultural heritage so we're talking about what is the significance so whenever india which is mainly elected as a member so what is significance what we are going to get so we are talking about this is an opportunity so this opportunity will be helping especially for india in community participation and strengthening of international cooperation through this intangible heritage and even that will be helpful for promoting of academic research uh, and as well as we can work with this convention with united nations sustainable development goals as well so this is the first important significance okay we are going for participation we are going for strengthening we are going for cooperation etc and next one is india will have opportunity to closely monitor the implementation of this 2003 convention so here india is also getting a unique opportunity that we can closely work with the implementation of this convention and india should also endeavor to encourage international dialogue within the state parties to the convention to better showcase the diversity and importance of living heritage yes here apart from these significance let me know if there are any new points with you so please let me know in the comment box okay especially the students who are from the arts background they might be knowing much more which is given in this newspaper article right so please let me know some important points that you can add for the significance of india which is mainly elected as a member okay let me know in comment box don't forget about this and now let us try to see next topic that is regarding g20 meeting so differences over russia dominate this g20 meeting so here as a new psc aspirant yes so once you started your preparation uh, you will be knowing that yes world is very very big so we are very very a minute part of that world so here if you are coming across this number of organization which are present throughout the world like g20 g7 till now we studied about g7 and now g20 and in earlier lectures we studied about seo and we said about number of organization like asia and like that so here we need to know about what is this g20 and we need to know about which are the members of this g20 and you have to number these members especially from which continent which uh, countries they are part of this g20 so that will be very important and you can easily remember also if you are following that method and i will be also explaining like how to remember all those countries by keeping world map in front of you so that will be also helpful for memorizing the map as well so now let us try to see this topic in detail so this topic is important from your gs paper to under international relations so here now context which mainly says that external affairs minister that is our is jay singer sir he mainly met with us secretary and even russian foreign ministers in bali on the sidelines of this g20 foreign minister meeting so on sidelines of this g20 foreign ministers meeting so our external affairs minister he mainly met with us secretary of state and also russian foreign minister so there is no need of remembering the names and if you are talking about details it mainly says that so this meeting which mainly indicated emerging differences within this g20 grouping as Russia accused US for forcing Europe and rest of the world to abandon cheap energy sources while US also blamed Moscow for global insecurity so in this meeting here here we have Russia on one side we have US on one side here US which mainly uh, which mainly blamed that here US along with european countries and even rest of the world they abandoned Russia from the cheap uh, sources of energy that means already you know that here us and as well as other european countries they mainly imposed some sanctions on this russia so because of this that led to decreasing of output of this crude oil from this russia so this is the blame which is mainly done by this russia so on other side usa which also blamed russia that russia it is a sole responsible for the global insecurity because as you all know russia and ukraine they are the largest producer of 
wheat but because of this russia ukraine crisis that led to decreased production of this wheat and now the different countries they are mainly focusing or entering into the different markets to get their wheat imports okay and even egypt which also came up with an agreement with india to ex regarding this wheat exports from india and if you talk about some more important points it mainly says that the interaction was held against backdrop of increasing supply of russian crude to india okay so interaction which also held against the backdrop of increasing the supply of russian crude to india this regarding american pressure to reduce india's dependence on russian petroleum supply so apart from that so here this g20 meet which is one of the important indicator of dynamics that was happening there is a changes that mainly happening in this g20 meet and if you see the world's biggest economic powers for example us russia european union india indonesia and japan they has a mandate to discuss global economic matters but the foreign ministers meeting in bali it was mainly dominated by criticism of russia by western members so here what happened the world's biggest economic powers per se us russia and european union india and as well as indonesia and japan they has a mandate to discuss this global economic matters okay and if you are talking about some facts regarding this g20 so actually this g20 is an informal group of 19 countries along with european union and here it also have some representatives from this imf that is uh, international monetary fund and even world bank and if you are talking about permanent secretariat which is located in this uh, headquarters and uh, it does not have any secretariat or headquarters so this is one of the important point so g20 do not have any permanent secretariat or headquarters and if you are focusing on this membership comprises a mix of world's largest advanced and emerging economies and they mainly represents about 2/3 of world's population and 80% of global gross domestic product and 80% of global investment and over 75% of global trade okay so the membership which mainly comprises of a mix of world's largest and advanced and em emerging economies and it mainly includes like 2/3 of world's population and 80% of this uh, global gross domestic product and if you are talking about the members they includes argentina australia brazil china and canada china canada france germany india is also a member indonesia italy japan republic of korea that is south korea mexico russia saudi arabia south africa turkey uk and us and even european union So, if you are talking about how to remember this name from the North America, we have three important parts. We can say that is Canada, US, and Mexico. They are part, and in this South America, Brazil and Argentina, and in this Africa, we have South Africa, and here in this Europe, we have European Union. Okay, and we have Fra UK here, France here, Germany, Italy, and here in Asia part, we have okay Russia, China, India, and here in this West Asia, we have Saudi Arabia. and here we have transition country that is turkey indonesia and australia so in this way you can easily remember the names of this countries to a part of this g20 so i hope it is clear and i hope it is also helpful for the students okay so try to make uh, take a world map and try to mark this countries such that you can easily remember this countries to a part of this g20 and whenever you are doing this map uh, work here then that will be also helpful to make you familiar with the countries where they are present that will be very very useful for upsc aspirant and if you like this so please let me know your comment in the comment box it is useful and now let us try to see the next topic title says beating the heat so why this editorial is in news so yesterday we discussed one article and you will be getting like ma'am where we discussed this article So whenever I am showing the PDF of the Hindu at last, so I am discussing about the important articles that appeared in that Hindu paper. So yesterday we started that. So there is a report that there is increasing of temperature in monsoon season. So because of this, this editorial which is seen in news and mainly came with different ideas, 
and if you go through this article it will be giving you greater insights regarding this climate change and heat so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under environment and ecology so now let us try to understand this topic in detail so actually you know that there is increasing of temperature so especially there is an increasing of global warming so not only in india but even throughout the world yes there is increasing of temperature so there is a steady raise in the planet's temperature and it is one of the consequence of humanity's unfettered use of fossil fuel forms the backdrop of altered weather patterns everywhere. So this article says that yes there is increasing of this global warming. So one important reason behind increasing of this global warming it is because of increased use of fossil fuels. So increased use of fossil fuels okay it is one of the backdrop so it is one of the important reason for the altered weather patterns so india too has been registering instances of anomalous weather and alarming frequency with an erratic monsoon and coastal erosion so what happened because of this increasing of this global temperature yes we are seeing some al uh, alarming weather frequencies and even there is erratic monsoon and we are also seeing there is a coastal erosion. So if you see some important reports, it mainly says that here CSC that is Center for Science Environment. So don't think that civil service examination. So it is Center for Science and Environment which mainly came up with releasing of data. Okay, it is talking about public weather data. So here it mainly said that there is increasing of temperature. So the temperature that is average temperature during this monsoon months it is higher even if you are talking about the summer months that mainly seen in May and as well as uh, March season May to March season okay March to May season. So here this monsoon temperature it is about 0.3 percentage higher than the average summer temperature when we are comparing from one, 1951 to eight, 1980. And in 2012 to 2021, so this anomaly rose to 0 0.4 percentage. Okay, so from 1950 to 1980, there is 0.3 degrees of a higher temperature, and now from 2012 to 2021, so it mainly rose to 0 0.4 percentage. And IMD, which mainly said that India's average temperature, which has been rising 0 0.62 degrees centigrade, that is from 1901 to 2000. So IMD says that temperature increase which mainly happened that is 0 0.62 degrees centigrade and the average daily maximum temperature for northwestern states in the March it was 30.7 degrees centigrade okay and whereas all India average here is 33.1 degrees centigrade or 2.4 degrees hotter that we can see. So average daily minimum temperature which mainly showed a larger difference that is about 4.9 degrees centigrade and here central India's normal maximum temperature is like 2 to 7 degrees higher okay so these are the report which mainly says that yes there is increasing of temperature and if you are talking about some more important reasons for this increasing of temperature is not only the use of this fossil fuels so let me know so what might be the reasons for increasing of this global warming so let please pause the video for 10 to 15 seconds and try to type and try to think what might be the reasons for the increasing of temperature so i will be pausing for one minute and please try to give the answer in the comment box so start thinking start thinking and make a habit like to think because that will be helpful for your UPSC mains because in paper you will be seeing some unexpected questions. So you should not be much shocked there. So that shock you have to be habituated by listening this, uh, to this Hindu analysis itself. So it is my motto that no one student who is following this Rathor Sai should not, should not get any fear in writing mains and should not get any fear regarding so unexpected questions in the examination hall. So there is a one practice I want to give you for you students. So I hope you commented the what are the reasons for this climate change. And now let's come back. So as I said, the first important reason here is increased use of fossil fuels like petrol, coal, diesel, etc. And this one is 
so even we are going for increasing of urbanization so there is a fast pace of urbanization that is mainly seen in india so because of this we are creating urban heat islands and we are increasing the concrete surfaces and dense population so because of this here urban areas are much hotter than compared to that of rural areas and this urban areas they are contributing to this heat stress so i hope you understand this and as one here is indian authorities they are cognizant of these trends and here the different state governments they are coming with a heat action plans so recently gujarat also came up with this heat action plan so national disaster management authority which is mainly working with 23 out of 28 heat prone states to develop heat action plans and they are mainly focusing on some important things such that here indoors made cooler and we are focusing on improving of this health infrastructure to treat heat stroke patient and we are also focusing on early warning system of this heat stroke so we are talking about it is now the time to focus on financial incentives and to focus on some measures for cooling plants so you are adapting and also mitigating the most visceral challenge it is a need of the hour now so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding planting trees so actually this article is mainly regarding one mahotsa so this article is also important from your gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and this topic is at most important from your mains point of view so i will try my level best to make you understand each and every point which is given in this article so if you read this article you will be getting some insights regarding what is the importance of forest importance of afforestation importance of plants so i think if you are in if you were in a school days so especially in schools on cultural activities will also be there so there sometimes we will be having debate and electrocutions right so at that uh, time i think i used to write uh, i also used to write essays whenever i am in the school days so at that time i was very much clear that i wrote number of essays regarding the forest so if you read this article then you will be getting the much insights regarding so why we need to go for growing of forest so what is the importance of this forest and how it mainly plays an important role in the climate change and what are the programs that india mainly had taken to improve this forest cover and even some states they came up with their individual uh, individual steps to increase the green cover for example in telangana state we have harita hara and not only that and even in urban areas we are following this miyawaki cultivation miyawaki method so regarding this miyawaki there was one question which appeared in this 2022 prelims also so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail and now if you see introduction it mainly says that last month about 100 women they employed under this mg narega that is mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act for digging pits and as well as planting trees and as well as watering them so here we are mainly focusing on on afforestation under this scheme as well so here work which is mainly happening right and even in this work even district administration which mainly involved as well so now it is time for this one mahotsav so one mahotsav means nothing but literally it means celebrating the forest it means nothing but celebrate the forest so the history of one mahotsav which mainly dates back to july 1947 itself actually it was for the first time it was organized by punjabi botanist the his name was like ms radhwa and later on in 1950 kanya lal manik lal munshi so he is he was also an environmentalist and union minister for agriculture and food expanded reach and as well as national scope of this okay one mahotsav so today in today's world so forest needs to be celebrated why because of some important reasons so we are daily going for de- deforestation and as well as we are going for destroying of forest in mainly because of increasing of greed of the people so if you're talking about some data here according to iucn that is international union for conservation of nature deforestation and the forest degradation which mainly contributes around 12 percentage of greenhouse gas emissions 
and the total area which mainly occupied by the primary forest in India which mainly decreased by 30.6 percentage there is mainly decreasing of forest that is mainly seen by 3.6 percentage and if you are talking about what is the aim here so the aim of the government is mainly focusing on afforestation and reforestation and we want to establish the trees okay so these are the some new strategies that now evolved so here we are mainly focusing on some what forest landscape restoration so in this forest landscape restoration which is one of the process we are mainly focusing on regaining ecological functionality and we are focusing on improving human welfare across deforested and degraded forest landscape okay we are mainly focusing on forest landscape restoration and we are especially focusing on ecological functionality and we need to regain this ecological functionality and we need to improve human welfare across deforested or degraded forest landscapes so we are talking about forest landscape restoration which is mainly seeks to involve communities in the process of designing and executing mutually advantageous interventions and we are focusing on upgradation of landscapes as well and nearly about 2 billion hectares of degraded land in the world they have scope for potential restoration of uh, as a forest land and if you are talking about one important aspect that we need to focus here is we need to ensure the diversity of species so whenever we are focusing on reforestation or afforestation and here whenever we are going for planting of trees so we should ensure that so there should be a diversity diversity is very important here we should not only focus on planting of single uh, single species of plant so we need to go for great diversity okay because if you are talking about our national forest it not only contain a single space of trees but we will be having diverse native tree species they are most efficient in sequestrating carbon than competitors of monoculture tree plantations so planting diverse species is also healthier for local communities so whenever we are going for planting of diverse species it is very very important for the healthier local communities and even livelihoods as well so if you are talking about what is the important role so tree plant tree planting which mainly comes with the varied environmental and ecological benefits so whenever we are going for the planting of the trees so what is the important role of these trees so we will be having both environmental and ecological benefits so first of all first important thing here is so here we can we can focus on the climate change we can decrease the effects of the climate change and we can mitigate this effects of climate change and we can influence the carbon cycle as well so as you all know forests they are called as a carbon sinks so whenever we are increasing the forest cover that will be going to absorb that will be going to absorb roughly 2.6 billion tons of this carbon dioxide because they mainly absorb nearly 33 percentage of carbon dioxide which is mainly released from this fossil fuels and millions of not only this environment and ecological functions but even millions of the lives of the li uh, lives and livelihoods of the people okay they are mainly dependent on this forest especially the forest or boon for the local communities and even their livelihoods okay and next one here is so even world resource institute forest ecosystem which mainly focused on enriching of soil fertility and water availability and even it is mainly focusing on agriculture productivity as well so whenever we are mainly focusing on water availability soil fertility and as well as enhancing of this agriculture productivity that will leads to the uh, revival of the lives of number of people who are living in these rural areas and if you are talking about what are the programs so mainly come up by the india so india and its program regarding this afforestation yes the span between this 2021 to 2020 2030 it is united nation decade on ecosystem restoration so in this decade we need to focus especially on the restoration of degraded terrestrial ecosystems and we should also focus on even the forest as well and in 2011 we came up with this bone challenge okay so in 2011 the bone challenge it was launched with a global uh, goal to restore 150 million hectares of degraded 
and deforested landscapes by 2020 and about 350 million hectares of land that is degraded and deforested landscapes by 2030 and India joined the bond challenge in 2015 which mainly led to pledging to restore 26 million hectares of degraded and deforested land by 2030 okay India joined this bond challenge in 2015 which mainly led to the pledge okay of restoring of 26 million hectares of degraded and deforested land and additional carbon sinks of 2.5 billion to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide which is mainly equivalent through forest and tree cover that need to be created by 2030 so these are some important steps which are mainly taken by the government and if you're talking about challenges yes when we are going for the forest restoration or reforestation or afforestation yes we have to face some challenges so challenges will be there in each and every step right so here these challenges are like areas of for restoration so we need to go for first identification of these areas of restoration so in which areas we can go for restoration and there is lack of importance according to research and scientific strategies in tree planting and there is also some conflict that is mainly seen okay conflict of interest and financing regarding the shareholders so these are some important challenges that we can see and now let us try to see the today's questions okay so the first question is regarding early vedic period so first statement here is cattle rearing were the dominant occupational activity second one is early vedic people used iron tools so whether there were iron tools here no not at all so in early vedic period there was no iron tools so you can eliminate this second statement and next one is early vedic people practice shifting cultivation yes of course so correct option is one and three and next question is regarding harappan town associated structures so here we have mohanjadaro so when we see mohanjadaro so one thing that will comes into your brain here is bath okay great bath so one three and harappa we have the series of granaries so here we have 12 granaries that is six in one row and six in another row and next one is Kali Bangan. So Kali Bangan it is very much famous for fire altars and Dola Vira for large tanks. So this was also one question which appeared in your previous year's prelims. Okay, so here answer correct option here is one is three that is Mohanjadaro, Great Bath, Harappa, series of greeneries, Kali Bangan, fire altars and Dola Vira large tank. So these are the answers for the yesterday's questions. And today's questions are the first one it is regarding again Harappa. And second question, it is also uh, regarding regarding the statements okay, that are mainly given. So try to read the statements and give me the important uh, the, uh, correct answer and try to eliminate the statements as soon as uh, as far as possible and try to come up with the correct answer. So in this way, you can maximize your marks in the prelims and the clearing of uh, prelims will be having more chances. Right. So and one more thing I want to say here is in Rathor's eyes, we came up with this main answer writing practice. And the registration which is mainly going to be closed by 10th of the July. So if you want to join this course, so please don't make late and please try to hurry and enroll this course. So this will be having enormous benefits. So after once you join, then you will be like, uh, you will be like feeling, yes, I did a good investment in this. That thoughts eyes for this answer writing practice to improve your answer writing. So apart from that, we also launched this foundational course for UPSC CSE 2020, 2022 and as well as 2023, 2024. And here we are providing the videos of more than 600 hours and the validity is 2 years and the cost here is just 49,000 for 2 years. So try to take these courses and even if you want individual courses, you can visit our website stratosisacademy.com. There you can watch the demo videos also. So these courses that we are offering that are very very useful and try to join those courses and if you have any queries please call me on this number 8074765513 and it's also the whatsapp number and you can also text me on this number and if you don't have whatsapp please you can also text me in telegram as well so to get this pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's Hindu date is July 9th and this is Delhi edition. So first topic here is former Japan PM Abe assassinated. 
so it is a one of the day i can say it is a morning day uh, for this uh, india because actually this shindo abe he played an important role in the developing of a good bilateral relationship between india and japan actually recently here modi also posted one image that my dear friend dear friend so actually there was a very very good relationship between our prime minister and the uh, prime minister of japan so actually this person okay this person he mainly uh, he mainly did this assassination and after once he asked why you did this okay so the answer he gave here is so what are the policies that came up by the shinzo abe he was not accepting that policies so if we talking about any country here whenever government it is coming up with any policy so it is not like so every people they will be accepting with that every person he is uh, happy with that so some people they will be showing the dissent but this is not the way okay to show the dissent to kill a person right and here actually uh, you may get many articles regarding the shinzo abe in the tomorrow's or day tomorrow day after tomorrow's uh, newspaper and they and i am expecting that there will be number of articles that will be coming up in the future so there we need to know about what are the contributions of the shinzo abe to india and i want to share one important thing here is regarding quad so regarding quad here so is a person who mainly put forth this quad right okay so here actually this person who also elected as a prime minister for four times and if you move forward there is nothing much present in the today's art today's newspaper actually entire newspaper which is mainly based on this uh, shinzo abe's death and if you move forward here you can see one uh, image okay there is a very very interesting image for me it is about king cobras so king cobras they emerge from the artificially hatched eggs under the project for captive breeding at pilikula biological park in mangalore so actually yes the population of uh, this animals it is mainly decreasing and if there is a proper number then we can see ecological system or ecology will be a balanced thing so whenever one species is decreasing in its number and one species increasing in the number i uh, i cannot say it is like a balanced ecosystem so for this whenever the number of uh, animals which are decreasing means we will be going for conservation it might be in situ conservation or ex situ conservation you have to know the examples of in situ and ex situ conservation methods so let me know in the comment box some examples of this in situ conservation and as well as ex situ conservation so which under which captive breeding will comes under so this is a one concept that you have to know so because of this i pick up this topic and if you move to this editorial page so there is one article regarding israel and iran so you can refer that article once and next article it is regarding uh, regarding cooling plants so i discuss this topic and regarding this planting trees also i discussed this topic and if you move forward in this news page page number 8 so 13 killed as flash flood hit yatra camp so you have to know this concept of this flash flood so this flash flood so what are the important reasons for this flash flood so let me know what is the concept of this flash flood and what are the reasons for this flash flood in the comment box because number of times we had our discussions and here you can see regarding this d20 meet i discussed this topic and here this is one article okay it is a blog post of prime minister my friend abe san okay so he uh, here our prime minister said that shinzo abe an outstanding leader of japan a towering global statesman and a great champion of indo japan relationship is not among us anymore so japan and the world they have lost a great visionary and i have lost a dear friend so this is something which mainly said by our prime minister actually prime minister he wrote this blog post regarding the history where he met this person and what's the relationship between between our prime minister and uh, shinzo abe so you can read this article then you will be getting much more insights and if you move forward here in this news page it mainly talks about the growth with inclusivity is a main principles of government so this article is also very important and here there is one more article that is defense exports touch rupees uh, th- 13000 crore okay 75 artificial intelligence products have been having application in the sectors will be launched so this is the thing which mainly said by our defense minister and it's one here is don't allow manufacture and import of polyester flags okay and if you move forward 
so in this world page also he this article which is mainly showing about rise of this shinzo abe and in this business page there is one article that is us job growth strong despite cloudy outlook so employ unemployment rate is very much steady that is about 3.6 percentage in us so this are the some this is the one article that you have to focus on so these are some important articles that appeared in our hindu newspaper today so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and try to share the videos in the telegram groups and whatsapp groups so where it will be also beneficial for the number of students so by this i'm concluding thank you so much